Lakers, this is Mr. Reem at North Tahoe High School. I'm going to give you a quick personalized overview of the free application for federal student aid, or the FAFSA. Today we'll be walking through each individual page uh, as a new user. We'll be using demonstration information, uh, and so as we go through, just know that you can kind of follow along to uh, enter the information that's pertinent to you. There are a few pieces, uh, and on the screen you'll see the FAFSA homepage. Um, make sure that you're going to FAFSA, and that's F-A-F-S-A dot E-D dot gov. Um, there are a few spoof sites out there, and you want to stay away from that because they are trying to capture your private and personal information. So make sure that you're going to the dot E-D dot G-O-V website. When you log in, there's a couple steps that I would encourage you to take first. Number one is... The student and a parent will need to complete the FSA ID number. If you see my icon on the screen, that lock icon will link there. We'll click on it, it will open up a new page. And that will tell you a little bit about creating that FSA ID. This is a digital signature that you will use to create and sign uh, your FAFSA. And so this should be kept private like your social security number. It also should be something that you do not share with anybody. And again, both student and parent will need this. And all you need to do to get started is create, uh, click the screen, create your FSA ID now. Um, you'll be using that uh, a little bit later on in the process. So we're gonna jump back over here to the FAFSA. And for my purposes, I already have essentially a demo account. So I'm gonna be logging in. For you, if you have not started doing this, and I encourage only the student should be doing this. Students should be filling out everything for college, whether that's their application, their essay, and the FAFSA. Parents, you will be involved, but you will need to join that process a little bit later. So in order to kind of create the, make this process simple and not have multiple FAFSA applications created, I highly encourage you to uh, let the student and make the, this the student's responsibility to create. And they would click the Start a New FAFSA button. For my purposes, purposes I'm going to be clicking the Login button. And that is also a, a way that once you've completed the FAFSA, if you need to go back and make a correction, or you've already started a process, maybe you didn't complete the FAFSA all in one step, then you can go in and click Login. And so that's where we're going to click first. On this page, uh, you'll see a couple different areas. Uh, on the on the right hand side, this is this will be on pretty much every page as we go through the application. You'll see some very simple helps, uh, helpful tips and hints. Um, I find that this usually answers many of uh, students' questions, and so if you just do this, please uh, ensure that you understand that piece. If you click on more, it will also take you to the additional help section. You can also find additional help, and we'll review this at the end of the process today. Um, but you'll be entering either your student FSA ID. Okay, uh, or the student information. Today we're going to be entering the student information. I'm going to be pulling information from a tool that I have. Um, so we'll be using a student named Maxine. Uh, again, this uh, FAFSA is only available to students who are United States citizens. I'm um, in California. If you are not a, a legal resident of California, United States, um, you you do have access to financial aid. However, not through the federal government. You'll have to fill out the California Dream Act, which is available um, through the California Student Aid Commission or CSAC. Uh, website and if you just Google California Dream Act that will take you to the link uh, to fill out that component which will uh, open up options for in-state tuition as well as uh, additional financial aid opportunities that may not be available to you but again if you do not have a social security number or not a legal resident please do not fill out the FAFSA um, you'll waste your time unfortunately um, and it could cause some problems a little bit later on so make sure that you're filling out the correct one based on your residency status um, so we're going to be entering our social security number and please do not guess on your social security number um, it's very important to enter um, the correct one which I'm making sure that I'm doing for this demo student you'll enter your birth date hopefully you know that and you'll hit next as long as everything looks right um, that should be okay okay and you'll read this disclaimer basically that uh, you're sharing information with the federal government you have to accept to move forward and then you'll get to this port Okay. If you do not have a FSA ID on file already, you can also create this here. Um, and then ensuring that you understand the dates. Okay, So it's a little confusing. So you're going to be filling out the application for the dates that you will essentially for next year. Okay, So not the year that we are currently in, which would be 17, 18 as, as of this recording, but for 2018, 2019. Okay, So you fill it out about a year in advance. Okay, So 
you'll read through this. You can always check the dates, like when you'll be attending college. If you'll be attending college in the fall of 2018 through June of 2019, you're filling out this FAFSA. You'll click the button that says start. You'll create a save key. Okay, and this has information over here. It needs to be four to eight characters, but this lets you uh, share access to the applica application or make corrections if parents need to add anything. Okay, so just I just make up a save key. Just the big thing is going to be making sure that you remember what that save key is. Oops, let me redo that. And we're going to hit next, and that should let us move forward. All right. So as you see here, it's gonna give us a few uh, instructions. Okay, so the links here might be helpful to review if you have any questions. Okay, but um, one big note that they do point out here that I will also point out, do not use the forward and back buttons on your browser. There are next and back buttons within the page itself. By using forward and back, it can screw up your progress um, and not save data that you have spent time entering. So please make sure that you're using the next. If you have any uh, needing to read any of this stuff, um, please do that. The other thing I'll point out on this page that you'll see throughout this application is on this left hand side of the screen, there's this blue bar. Okay, it says student. Anytime you see student, it's going to be asking for student information, not parent information. All right, so it will ask students for their financial information if they filed taxes or, or earned any money. Please make sure that you're using student information on this. Uh, that is sometimes a point of confusion. And this is a big reason why I do encourage students to be the ones that fill out most of this and really bring in their parents once they reach to the area that says parent on the left hand side of the screen. We're gonna hit next. We're gonna go ahead and uh, fill out a few of this, a uh, few pieces of few, few pieces of this information here. Um, so if you uh, want to fast forward through some of these pages, uh, this will be a little bit more of a lengthy video. But if you want to fast forward through me filling out the information and potentially coming across errors, which you might as well, um, main, most of the errors I might be encountering are going to be because I'm trying to make up data on the fly. Um, like an address or a uh, phone number, which may not be um, accurate. So let me go ahead and fill this out and you should do the same. So your permanent mailing address. So um, for us up here in Tahoe, um, if you're watching this from another school, another area, it might not apply to you. But for us in Tahoe, our mailing addresses often are going to be a P.O. box. All right. So that's going to be something important to note. So you'd be entering P.O. box. So I'm going to enter our P.O. box at the school. That's in Tahoe City. And that's in California, and that's 96145. Your browser may automatically try to fill this in. You can feel free to use that. I would just go through and verify that everything is accurate because sometimes it pulls information incorrectly. It asks a question, have you lived in California the last five years? I have, um, and so if you haven't, it might ask you to add additional information about um, your legal residency. So if you live there now, um, and then how long ago did you become a legal resident? If you recently moved to California, um, it might affect your, your your residency in California, depending on kind of what your status is. So just know that if you just recently moved to California, um, it might ask you additional information. They might actually reach out to you. But for most students that graduate from our high school, they've lived in California for at least five years. I'm gonna use my school phone number and my school email address. For email addresses, students and parents, I encourage you uh, do not use your school email address as a student. Um, that email address is only available through basically a year after graduation. So I would, I would use a personal email address on this um, because you'll be doing this every year that you're attending college. So every, this is a yearly process. What is your marital status? So most high school students I know are single. And then do you have any driver's license information that you wanna provide? That's optional. Um, you don't have to, so I'm gonna say no because I'm not gonna share that, but you can if you want. Sometimes that helps speed up some identification process. Okay, oh, and it will tell you, for example, here's a good example, I left a question blank that's required. Okay, so it asks if I'm male or female. Um, this is gonna be based on your, your legal gender of birth. Um, so so if, you, if you have transitioned or if you're a transgender student, um, this information might be a little bit uh, questionable, but this will be something that needs to be matching on your social security card, your legal identification, because for the males, uh, there is a requirement that you join the selective service, which is essentially the draft. So that's a requirement as part of um, get, uh, getting financial aid. 
All right, so we're going to go ahead and skip through this and it should let us move on to the next page. Great. So it's going to ask us again if you're a U.S. citizen. And this is, again, where we're going to be honest. We do not want to um, not want to do this. It's going to give us information over here if you have questions about what is an eligible non-citizen. OK, so it'll give you details. OK. Um, so if we selected this, it'll it should give us some information as we go forward. OK, but I'm going to select U.S. citizen because that's the vast majority of students that we work with. Um, are you registered for the Selective Service System? Uh, sometimes if you register for a vote uh, or you register at the post office, you can select yes. If you select no, um, it's going to give you the option to simply register me. All right, so that's probably the easiest method if you have not yet. Okay, it's going to ask you what uh, is your high school status Okay, in 2018-2019. So um, remember the year that we're talking about is going to be next year, and then you fill this out in your senior year, so you will be a high, you'll have a high school diploma. Um, what will be your college grade level? Okay, so this will be your first year. You never attended college. Okay, and that is something that you'll want to just double check. Degree certification. So this will be most students' first bachelor's degree or an associate's degree if you are um, attending a certificate, if you're attending a junior college or a trade school. Um, so pick the one that's most appropriate for you. So four year, two year, and so on. Um, I would encourage all students to select yes in the on the work study um option it does not sign you up for work study it just lets them be able to package that in your uh, financial aid award letter for you you can always decline that later if you decide that you do not want to pursue work study however if you if you put no or don't know it potentially might not appear on your on your financial aid award letter so i would sl select yes and this will ask you this basically is, this question is if you're returning to college so most high school graduates will say no if you're a foster student or a foster youth, okay, you'll you'll select the option there. It's going to ask for some demographic information about parent one and parent two. Again, if you have both parents at home, uh, you're going to pick one that's going to be parent one and one that's going to be parent two. It honestly does not matter. Um, if you have if you live with a single parent household, you're going to put them in parent one and you'll leave parent two blank. Um, if you, uh, for example live uh, with a caregiver, they're going to be parent one. If you live with one biological parent and a step parent that they are married and they, they cohabitate, they'll be that step parent will be parent two. So whoever's providing that support and whoever you live with. Okay, so we're going to assume we're going to kind of go with the two parents just to can keep show you all the options. Okay, and so we'll say one parent has a high school education and one has a college education. We're going to find the name of our high school. So we're just going to type in North Tahoe. We're going to type in Tahoe City. We're going to select California. It should give us an option to select that. Okay. So you're going to select North Tahoe High School and you're going to click next. All right. So this option gives you the, the, the ability to add 10 different schools to your FAFSA. If you're applying to more than 10, um, and I know there are students out there that are, you need to select 10 to start. You'll go through the entire process of the FAFSA. And on that home page, next to where I clicked log in, if you can remember back to that page or if you want to visit, there's a button that says add schools. Okay, then you'll just return there and you'll add the you know, remaining schools that go beyond that 10 um, that you've added on this step. Okay, so just go through. You're going to go ahead and either find the federal school code, which might be a little bit harder to find unless it's shared with you on your application or if you're able to find it on the school's website. Most students will actually probably fill out. Um, the state and the school name. So we'll just say, uh, let's say Fullerton. And we'll hit search. You can search strictly by state and it'll list all of the different states out there. So we're going to select California CSU Fullerton and we're going to hit add. All right. And then we can go through. We can say if we wanted to look at Santa Cruz, we're going to look this up and say Santa Cruz. And it's going to say UC Santa Cruz. If we wanted to look up and say, um, Cuesta. Give you a couple different options. We could do that. And we're going to hit add. If we wanted to add Chapman. So give you a couple different options. So we're going to click add. So we have a CSU, a UC, a junior college, and a private school. And we can even try. Universal Technical Institute and see if that shows up. It's going to let us. 
Some schools show up in here. Some schools don't. So I'm just trying this and seeing. So there's a few technical schools in here. It looks like UTI, Universal Technical Institute, is not um, listed here. So that's okay. But if you were looking at ITT Tech or something similar, um, another type of tech school, you can do that. And you just add all the schools that you want. All right. And then you can hit next once you've added the number of schools that you want. By adding schools to this list, you are not applying. You are not, they are just going to get a copy of the data that um, you're completing for the FAFSA. So it's almost better, in my opinion, to over, uh, essentially over report than under report. If you have any idea like, hey, I think I might want to go to Cuesta or I want to use, you know, I'm applying to CSUs, but I might want to do junior college depending on the financial situation or if I get in, add it pick the schools that you think might be the best. Um, so you're gonna select housing plans. Okay, so you're gonna wanna definitely um, think about this this question because this will depend, this will affect your uh, financial aid award letters and the cost of attendance. Um, many students, um, especially at the four-year level, will probably consider on-campus housing and I would probably recommend suggesting that. Cuesta College, they don't have dorms. All right, so that's gonna be hard to live on campus. So you'll either select off campus, which would be like living in student housing or an apartment, or with a parent. So if you're attending your local junior college and you might live with a parent, that's gonna affect your cost of attendance. So we'll just do that. And then also Chapman will say on campus. We'll say off campus actually just to, to play with it. You can reorder these, okay? And there's people that will tell you moving them in certain areas will, will be helpful or not. Um, I usually just, I, I, don't, I, I don't fall in the agreement that having a specific order of your colleges really does anything. Um, however, I, you know, if, if you really were concerned about it, the best way, then my, my opinion is really just put them in alphabetical order. Um, it's hard to argue with, you know, it's in alphabetical order. So it's hard to say like, this is my top school or not my top school. Like it's hard to read into that information. Okay. We're going to go ahead and click next. Okay. And it'll tell you application was saved correct, uh, successfully. This is going to ask if you have children. So if you are a, a student parent, um, you might, uh, you know, you might be putting yes. Or if you have, if you're a caregiver for a younger sibling as an, you know, an adult, an 18 year old, then you would maybe say yes. Most students that I know will probably say no. Do you have any dependents other than your children or spouse who live with you? And again, this is you. So if you're supporting, say, a grandmother, you alone, not your parents, not not them but you and they are, they, you, they are basically your dependent. And again, most students that I know will probably say no. Okay, your number of family members in 2018-19. All right, so this is gonna be to determine your household size. It's gonna be yourself, okay? The number of children. Okay, so this is basically gonna be answering on these questions. So if you click yes, it's gonna ask you what how many um, people in your household um, are there and you'll answer this again for parents as well so so this is just for you as a student so your family household size as your student would be one okay and then it asks also um what is you'll also enter how many people in your household will be in college in 2018 and 2019 okay so that would probably be one or two maybe three depending on your your siblings or if your parents are going to college Okay, but for our purposes, we'll just put one. Okay. So, so this area um, down here will tell you automatically if you're considered independent or dependent. Most high school students are going to be considered dependent. Um, there's a very, there's actually a tool that you can look up online to fill out the FAFSA. Um, it doesn't strictly depend on if you are claimed on taxes or things like that. Um, this one in the, the demo account that I'm using um, has a birth date of 1994. So uh, the dependency limit is actually one year later than this. So if they were born before January 1st, 1995, um, a student would be considered independent um, based on their age. So that is why this screen is showing um, independent status. Um, I can't go and change the birth date because it's got an account tied to it. So we're going to move forward with this. But just know that it's probably going to tell um, your student or yourself, if you're filling this out as a student, that you are dependent. And that's OK. Um, it's very, very rare to see a high school student be independent. OK, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to click yes here, though, because I'm going to show you the parent side of it. But just know that it's probably um, going to say something different. 
on this page. Okay, so we're going to hit next. So the, now we're on the parent demographic. Do you see a difference here on the page? It's going to change colors. It's also going to change to parent. So students, if you're filling this out, this is where you kind of probably want to continue to fill this out. You should probably sit down with a parent though, um, or your parents if you have two, and fill this out together. Your parents will be need access to things like their own social security number, their own personal information, um, as well as their tax returns, and so their, their financial data. Okay, so it's gonna ask you for the marital status of your parents. Okay, so you could say, because we have, we're going on the two-parent model, we're gonna say married or remarried. Okay, when did your parents get married or remarried? It's gonna, we'll say, um, say January 1979, just to make up a number. Um, what is the parent's social security number? Okay, so I'm gonna try to enter one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and see if it'll let me do that. Okay, what is your parent's last name? We're gonna say um, demo last name. Okay, what is your first initial? We're gonna say A. And what is their birthday? And we're gonna say um, 0101, okay, so we'll say 10, one, not 11. We're gonna say 1962 making up some dates here parent two okay so again we're kind of keeping the parent one and parent two in line and we want to keep those parents straight of who's who um, and and it's not dependent so if you have parents of the same sex or same gender that is okay they they can both be fathers they can both be mothers um, it can be a step parent so just knowing which parent is which though is the is the key thing here um, so we'll enter two 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 three three four 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 and see if that'll let us go through hopefully it will it should as a demo um and we'll say demo last name we'll say b and we'll say 12 2 two, 19 65 oops and i see an error here so this is where you kind of want to make sure that you're typing in things correctly Okay, we're gonna type demo at gmail.com, demo at gmail.com. This is where I'm taking a little bit of risk to see if it's gonna let me move forward with this information. It's gonna ask if your parents have lived in California for the last five years. Okay, for this purpose, uh, I'm assuming that you lived with your parents for the last five years and you said yes to this question, so we probably should say yes to this question. Um, it'll be kind of odd if you said one, if you said no as a student and they said yes as a parent, so this probably will be the same. We're going to say the household size. Okay, so this is going to be um, your student, your parents, any other children that are in the household, and the number of parent, uh, people who are not parents' children, but they receive support from your parents. So that could be a, 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 a parent's sibling, a parent's uh, mother or father that maybe lives with um, you in your house. So it's basically how many people in your household. Um, so we're going to say four for this example. And then how many people in this household will be attending college? And we're gonna say one. So we're gonna say next and cross our fingers. All right, cool, let us move forward. Okay, so it says you must provide information from your 2016 tax return. And that's an important date. Okay, so you wanna make sure that you have access to that 2016 tax return. Um, that is the most recently filed tax return, not the one that your parents are, are kind of finishing up and will file in April of 2018. Okay, so. We're gonna say yes, already completed. What is their tax filing status? Married file joint return. And again, this is all gonna be information that's available um, on their parents' tax return. So, or you can they should know this as a parent and a tax filer. Did your parents file a Puerto Rican or foreign tax returns? We're gonna say no. Okay, and as you go through, it's gonna say this. On this page here, so you see my icon, it's gonna say applying is faster and easier if you transfer your tax return from the FAFSA from the IRS data retrieval tool. This tool is something if your parents, if your parent has already filed taxes and it's on file with the IRS, this is a wonderful step and I highly, highly encourage students to, to take advantage of it. This allows you by clicking this link, it's, it'll open up a new page that will link to the IRS. Okay, and it'll open up a new window that your parent will then log into the IRS using the information on their tax return, usually like a, a, their name, uh, birth date, social security number, and things like that. And it will automatically connect 
their full tax return and the pieces that are needed from that tax return into the FAFSA. There's a couple of benefits here. Number one is it speeds up the process. Number two, uh, it pulls all of the accurate information. There's not a lot of guesswork involved. It's going to get the details that they need specifically instead of have you having to look for box 20 or box 15 or whatever it is on your tax return or pulling it out of storage. Um, the other thing is there's something called verification. Okay, and so that that process is is kind of essentially like a uh, a, a tax audit that the IRS does, but they audit um, anyone who you know they audit about a quarter to a third of students every year that are filing for financial aid. And basically that just means that they are going to ask you to submit tax information to prove that the numbers that you have entered into the FAFSA are matching what your income actually is. So, so by doing the IRS data retrieval tool, you are almost guaranteed to not be verified. So they are, that's basically verifying it already. So, so that's a, a, a great, benefit of doing this IRS data retrieval tool. We're going to skip that just to give you the demo, but that is another tool I highly encourage you to do that. There might be certain circumstances where you might not be able to do that, and it's going to make sure that you don't want to do the IRS data retrieval tool. So if you don't, you just click no thanks. And it's going to keep us going. All right, so what kind, what uh, income tax return did you file? Okay, so we're just going to file this one, the 1040. It's going to ask you, and it will say, what is your parents' adjusted gross income, or AGI, for 2016? On this specific form, it's going to tell you exactly where to find this information on line 37. Okay, so we're going to enter line 37, and we're going to say, okay, that may, we'll, we'll pretend that it was $67,000. Okay, and it's going to ask you for a breakdown, because we said they're filing jointly. They're going to say, how much did parent one earn from working, and then how much did parent two earn from working. Okay, so it's going to give you information here about where to potentially find that. We'll say this parent earned $27,000, and we'll say this parent earned $40,000. Okay, and that should all add up here. As of today, it's going to ask you if you're a dislocated worker. There's details here about information about that. Okay, it does have a don't know option, but um, you might want to do a little research. Your parents should hypothetically know that. You should also um, know that if you qualify, you can select the different um, support options that you may have. Your, your student or yourself might be enrolled in. Um, if none of them apply, you can go ahead and do that. This one we'll just mark don't know. We'll just we'll say that because it's it's not really sure, and it will you should have an idea um, about this, but it's okay to put don't know as well. Okay, parent financial information. We're entering the income tax. Um, so this is found on lines fifty six minus forty six. So we'll just make up a random number of two thousand dollars. We'll enter the exemptions. Okay, so this is going to be, there's information here about where to find the exemptions. We're not just making up a random number. It's going to be actually entered. So we'll just say four. We're going to make up numbers here. This all, other information here is also on their tax return. If they received, um, if they paid any child support, if they had any um, college or grant money, there's a lot of different things. Okay, so we're going to skip this, but you potentially might have things here that you can select. Okay, and that's you'll, it's pretty much what's on your tax return. Okay, that's going to ask for your parents' total current balance of cash savings and checking accounts. Okay, so this is going to be, they're going to have to look things up. Okay, so we'll say, you know, if, if our parents have, um, say, a savings account open with a bank, um, and this is different than, than say, like a, typically a, um, like a retirement account or a 401k, but if this is like, if you have a bank, a, a regular savings account with, Say we'll just say like forty thousand dollars in savings, cash checks and say or cash savings and checking accounts. Okay, this is going to be investments. Okay, this does not include real um, your your home that you live in, but it could include investment properties. So we'll say this parent, um, this family has a rental property or a second home, and we'll say that net worth. Okay, is today with the the market being high might be. $375,000, okay? As of net today, what is the net worth of your parents' current business or investment? Okay, so we can typically, we should be able to skip this if we don't have a business, okay? So it says it's saved again. 
And again, so another thing here, so you'll see we're still on financial information, but you'll see the color has changed. You'll see the information over here has changed to student. This is asking if you as the student in 2016 filed for taxes, okay? Some students will, some students will not. I'm gonna select not going to file for this purpose. Okay, just to show this demonstration. They're gonna ask how much did you earn from working in 2016? This includes wages, salaries, and tips. So we'll just say $1,500, just that, and we're gonna say no. We're gonna ask if you, as the student, had any of this information. We're probably gonna say none. Okay, we're gonna add skip assets. If you, as a student, owns a business or a second home, you might need to say yes, or sorry, say no here, so you can enter that information, but most students that I know probably will have this question be answered as yes. All right, and Pretty much at this point, it's almost a congratulations, okay? Because you basically at this point now need to uh, basically sign and send it off, okay? And so this question about a preparer, most students again will probably answer no here. Um, this There's information about what a preparer is if you need that. You can view or print your FAFSA information. Sometimes that's nice to, to be able to double check things. I'm happy as a school counselor to review this with you. Um, and that might, might be a nice way to do that. Read through this information. It has some specific details about um, the accuracy and potential consequences about falsifying information on this form. Okay, you'll have to agree to be able to submit it. And then you'll either enter your FSA ID, okay, and your password, or create one from here, okay, if you need to. There are other options to sign and submit here as well. Okay, so you'll either sign electronically with that FSA ID, Again, that's the quickest, that's the fastest, that will also be the fastest turnaround time. Optionally, you can print a signature page. Okay, so you can actually you know, print out a page, your parent um, or yourself will sign it, and then you mail it in to them. Um, that will take longer to get your financial aid reward letter back. Um, and there's a little bit more potential for error. And then submit without signatures allows you to submit your FAFSA, but you'll need to return later to actually sign it using one of these two options. Okay, so we'll print the signature page just to, to show you what that looks like. We'll open up this. It's going to show you here. It's going to say, because we were uh, determined based on this demo student's age to be an independent student, it's going to say not required to sign for this parent. However, most of the time, again, most students are going to be dependent, and it will require a parent signature. Okay, so this will have a space for the parent to sign as well. You'll read this. You'll sign it. You'll have to mail it in. Okay, so you'll mail it directly to them. And so that's just something that you need to do. And then once we've done that, we can hit submit my FAFSA. And congratulations, your FAFSA has now been completed. Okay, that was easy. I did this walking through every single step and explaining things in about 30 minutes. Okay, so that's pretty pretty good for, for getting some free money for college. Um, on this page, it will give you some important information. So you will want to print, and I would suggest also save this as a PDF, uh, this page with your confirmation in case there's ever any issues with like colleges receiving your financial aid uh, number information from the FAFSA. It also gives you your data release number, which is something that if you have questions or have any issues, it sometimes um, it will require you to, to have access to this number. If you have other siblings in college, uh, maybe an older sibling or a twin or something like that, you can actually transfer the parent information into a new FAFSA so to save time so you don't have to fill out all the same information about the parents. Okay, They'll have to sign it again, but they won't need to necessarily complete all the financial information or that kind of thing. Some information about what happens next, you'll get an email version of this. Um, you'll, you'll get an email following up that it was actually processed. It'll show you some details about the schools that you've added. All right, so there's a graduation rate, retention rate, transfer rate. All right, and so some of this is going to be uh, good information to have. Down here, it's going to give you expected family contribution. Okay, this student received a zero EFC, meaning this student will be expected to pay zero dollars. All right, this is all an estimate. All right, so that will be used to determine your aid eligibility. Okay, this is going to give you an estimate over here about how much. Um, in terms of grants or loans you might be eligible for. This is not your financial aid package. This is simply just giving you an estimate of potential things you might look for. Okay, so I would not read too much into this, but it is something that you can do. Okay, um, at this point, once you've saved it and printed it, you can go ahead and exit. It's gonna say okay. 
And I'll just quickly show you, again, when you log back in, if you needed to provide signatures, it'll give you that option here. Um, if we go back to home, if we log out, from here on out, we're not using start a new FAFSA. We would be using this login button using the login information that you've, you've created with that FSA ID. Okay, here's the button to add a school. If you need to say, for example, view that student aid report or SAR, that's the, the, the information that we had at the end, um, that will give you some information about uh, sometimes scholarships require this and things like that. You can also make a correction. Okay, so if you've found out like, oops, I misspelled something or our address has changed or something like that, that's something that's, inc that's important that you can do here as well. There are a few final things that I just wanna highlight for you while I have you on the video. And that is, uh, sometimes I get a lot of questions about if my financial information has changed. And so that's going to be something that, again, this is a 2016 in this current um, year of recording, uh, 2016 tax information, a lot changes over the course of a year or two years. Um, and so uh, if your financial status has changed, you still need to complete this with the 2016 tax information. But... Um, you can contact the school, the financial aid departments at the schools um, to, to work on explaining any major changes that has happened to your family recently that might affect your ability to change, to pay for college based on maybe a, 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 a loss of a job, a divorce, um, whatever it might be that will, will cause you to potentially not be able to afford what the FAFSA says you might be able to. Those financial aid officers have what's called professional judgment, and they'll be able to work with you to potentially make adjustments on an individual campus basis or assist you in other ways. So I'd encourage you to reach out if you feel like that's the case. Typically, this is going to be big deal things, so loss of jobs, things like that, where we're seeing a, a large change in the financial um, availability of funds to pay for school. Typically, it's not going to be like uh, I lost a few hours at work and I'm now making you know, $2,000 less than what I made in 2016. That's probably not going to make a big change in terms of the financial availability. It doesn't hurt to call, but um, most of the time it's going to be large things like a divorce, a major loss of job, um, things like that, that you can maybe get some professional help on. If you have any questions about the FAFSA or any of this process, I find that the FAFSA support people are very, very helpful. Okay. Here are some questions that are tend to be high depending on the time of year when people are filling this out. Okay, they've done a really good job of identifying key questions and giving some pretty quick answers. So please check this out before you kind of freak out or pause or, or even pick up the phone and call me. This is a great resource. So, so use the resources that are available because a lot of times when you call me, this is gonna be the first place I check as well to verify that what we're doing is correct. They also have a wonderful contact us page. Okay, so if you click contact us, it will open up this page and they have a number of phone numbers, emails, as well as chat that you can do. Okay. So they also have a chat tool. And so I encourage you guys to check that out. Okay. So that's something that if you do not know what you're doing on this, there's a lot of help available out there. I'm very happy to help you as well. In my opinion, every single student um, should fill out either the California Dream Act or the FAFSA. Um, to be able to qualify for any potential aid. Some students and parents and families believe that they won't qualify for aid, and they might not um, for, for need-based aid, but they might qualify for, for merit-based aid, which oftentimes, and depending on the school, will require information from the FAFSA to be able to qualify you for that free money, usually. And so that's something that's important. The other thing is that, that financial situations sometimes change. Um, uh, an unexpected loss of job, a change in the economy can very quickly cause someone who maybe doesn't qualify for aid to then qualify for aid, which if you don't file this um, FAFSA, can potentially limit the options available for that financial aid department to help you out um, in terms of maybe getting a, a cheaper or more accessible loan that might help in a circumstance where that's unavoidable or something like that. So once again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I hope you enjoyed this. I, I do apologize for the 40 minute video, but I do feel like it's very important to walk you through step by step um, and show you that the FAFS is not hard, that it's pretty simple and, and anybody can do it in less than an hour um, to, to get stuff free for college. So thank you for watching. This is Jeff once again at North Tower High School um, and thank you for participating.